Hey everybody, Mike Naso here from Internet Partnership Radio with Michael Moss and Mike Ferraro in our IPR studio with an update on Tropical Storm Claudette, which is making landfall along the Florida Panhandle. Michael Moss, the biggest threat from Claudette appears right now to be rainfall, but certainly this has uh, developed rather quickly in just the last 24 hours. Indeed so. I mean, we wasn't even talking about a depression 24 hours ago with this thing, but... You know, Mike, you're absolutely correct. And that's the thing about funnel boundaries, when they come out over the northern and northeast Gulf, they, can, they have a tendency to have this potential to develop these fast uh, developing systems. Uh, Hurricane Alicia in 1983 uh, did that, and even uh, uh, Hurricane Humberto last year uh, did something uh, very similar to that as well. But it, it did... Uh, it did uh, blow up uh, quite quickly, but yeah, heavy rainfall. Now we did have one report uh, yesterday evening of a tornado from this, and uh, near Cape Coral, Florida, and there was some uh, some structural damage uh, from that tornado. But overall, I'd say the tornado threat with the system it's such a small, compact system. It's it's very very limited at this point in time. Definitely, Michael, and I did want to pass along the latest update from the National Hurricane Center on Tropical Storm Claudette as of 12.25 a.m. Central Time. That'd be 1.25 a.m. here in the east, so just about seven minutes ago from when this is recorded. Uh, National Weather Service Doppler radar data indicate that the center of Tropical Storm Claudette made landfall near the eastern end of Santa Rosa Island, just southeast of Fort Walton Beach, Florida, around 12.10 a.m. Central or 0510 UTC. That's from Forecaster Brown. So Claudette is inland now. It has made landfall in the Florida Panhandle. And it appears winds at landfall were right around the 50 mile per hour range. And it was looking earlier like Claudette really might have started to spin up. And we got Mike Ferraro in here. And uh, Mike, it, uh, it looked earlier today like Claudette might try and become a hurricane very quick, but it got a little bit of wind shear and that kind of kept it in check. Yes, it did. I was, uh, was watching uh, watching this thing spin up quite quickly off the uh, western coast here from yesterday off of, off of Tampa. Um, and, uh, yeah, we were thinking maybe we were looking maybe 60, 65 mile an hour anyway at landfall and uh, very lopsided. Uh, most of the, uh, you know, heavy activities located off to the, the uh, north and west of the, the circulation center. Um, as it made landfall, but still very impressive. I was impressed with it, uh, just seeing it uh, spin up so quickly and had good. That's what show you just a little bit of good environment, you know, does for these things. And uh, I'm sure that's uh, uh, we'll see what uh, what uh, comes out of there. Hopefully, just a heavy rainmaker there. Yeah, it definitely lo looks like that. And looking at the radar right now, Michael Moss, I know you're. Uh, when it comes to severe weather central and uh, you guys over at Center of Circulation always checking out the severe weather. This system uh, has a lot of heavy, heavy rainfall right offshore, Panama City and Fort Walton Beach, especially on the right side. And like Mike said, it's pretty lopsided. Uh, Mike Ferraro, we got the three mics in here, so bear with us here. But Michael Moss, uh, the rainfall from this could be uh, pretty torrential at times, uh, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would say so as well. There has been some uh, there has been some trouble of this of this uh, rainfall coming into the uh, the coast. It's been kind of hanging off coast, but nevertheless, uh, with the potential for this very heavy rain, uh, there has been a myriad of flood advisors issued all the way to central Alabama from this thing, and uh, right around the coast. And and as the uh, you know, we take a look at the National Hurricane Center advisories on this as well. I mean, it, it, it's now the question that we will continue to see. Uh, possibilities of rainfall accumulations anywhere from the three to six inch amount, but even in the Big Bend area across Florida uh, Panhandle, uh, ten inches could very well uh, be possible as well. And there is going to be a little bit of a storm surge with this, uh, possibly up to three to five feet. That's a minimal storm surge, but some beach erosion is also going to be possible with this as well. So yeah, heavy rain is uh, going to be a threat. Still some gusty winds. I know there was a gust earlier reported. Uh, of 51 miles an hour uh, from one of the spiral rain bands with a storm. Absolutely, and again, uh, it is forecast to continue to push towards the uh, northwest 
and uh, move into the state of Alabama in the next few hours, and then eventually Mississippi making its way on up towards Tennessee by the time it starts to dissipate. So it could carry and should carry some of that nasty weather along with it. Now, it's not the only game in town. We did want to talk about two other storms because we do have watches and warnings out uh, with uh, our one storm, and that is Tropical Depression Anna, and Anna has uh, really fought the last few days. It's moving right across the Leeward Islands. There is still a tropical storm watch in effect for Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla, St. Martin, uh, Saba, Spain, Estatius, Guadeloupe, St. Barthelemy, and the Dominican Republic. Uh, so those areas are all under the watch for uh, Tropical Storm Watch as Anna moves across the Leeward Islands. And again, as of 11 p.m. Uh, Atlantic Standard Time, which is also Eastern Time, uh, Anna was at 16.0 north, 61.2 west, or just 25 miles southeast of Guadeloupe. And it's moving west-northwest extremely quickly at 26, and it's going to be approaching Hispaniola later on, Monday and uh, winds are only 35 miles an hour and it could open up into a tropical wave, uh, 1,008 millibars, but the rainfall is the big threat over the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico 2 to 4, maybe up to 6 inches over the mountains as Anna continues to move through. Uh, Mike, w Michael Moss, w what is your uh, thinking with Anna at this point? Is it going to open up to a wave or get caught up over land or could it come back down the road? What's your thinking? Uh, from looking at the forecast models and the, uh, the history of the storm and looking at where it's going, uh, one problem that Anna has been fighting ever since uh, she's basically been a tropical storm and even a depression is the own easterly wind shear that's actually been affecting the system. I mean, this, it's actually been pushing the system eastward at a rather quick pace, over 20 miles an hour, which is, which is very quick for any tropical type system. And that's exactly what uh, has also been this system's one of its worst enemies as well. Uh, it's been pushing it very, very quickly, and it's also going to be running into an environment, number one, Hispaniola. Lots of mountains are over 10,000 feet tall. It's very hard for a circulation to survive that kind of terrain, and then if it does by any chance survive it, and then it's got Cuba to transverse. And pretty high mountains there as well. And even that isn't enough. There is some very high wind shear over the, uh, the, the Caribbean right now, about 30, over 30 knots worth of wind shear right now. And that's not very conducive for a tropical system um, at this point in time or at, at all for, for the most part. Now, you, you take a look at where Claudette's come in at. Uh, it's been fighting wind shear as well, about 20 knots worth of wind shear over it as well. And that has sheared thunderstorm activity off to the east side of it. Now, one that has not been affected by wind shear and it is uh, Bill that we're going to talk about here shortly. Bill is uh, under a very light wind shear environment, though it's possible Bill could run into some wind shear down the road. Yes, yeah, absolutely possible. But uh, as you as you mentioned, Anna has completely been dry as a bone, been sheared mainly from the east, and it's. Uh, fortunate for the islands because had that easterly shear not been there, Anna could have been a hurricane, even a major hurricane, moving through the Leeward Islands right now, and it could have been uh, a much different situation than we see. Mike Ferraro here in the studio. Mike, what are your thoughts on Anna and uh, his potential future? Well, Anna's been uh, he, you know, dead and back again, pretty much, I guess, one sums it up. And, uh, so it uh, have a lot of potential, and as you said, it's been impacted heavily by easterly shear and Tana Dryer got, has been entrenched in uh, numerous occasions. Um, tonight, it looks like life support. I mean, uh, a lot of models aren't bringing it back if it, regener if it degenerates back down to a wave. Uh, there's some convection with it, I'm looking at it. Uh, right now, there's some conv uh, heavy thunderstorm convection associated with it, um, but it's it's hard to say. It's pulsed, you know, up and down quite a bit, and it may just be a quick pulse, and it'll get, you know, moved moved, moved itself completely away from it again, as it's happened quite a bit. But uh, I think if this thing ends up over Hispaniola, 
on the islands there, it's going to tear it apart pretty good. And, and I don't know if it really has a you know a chance down the road. I mean, time will tell on it, but uh, it has survived uh, quite a bit. And uh, uh, 